Hello, thank you for your purchase of a Dogberry Collections barn door. In this video, we'll cover the installation steps and guidelines when installing your barn door. Be advised that the recommended skill level for installation is medium to advanced. Also, be sure to refer to the enclosed installation instructions frequently while installing your door. Before opening your door, take note to not cut on the face or back of the box. When unpacking your door, lay it down on a flat surface with the small rectangle tab openings facing up. Pull each tab out of its opening and pull out all the staples along the perimeter. Flip the cardboard upward to uncover the door. Note the location of the hardware enclosed in side channel and identified with hardware located here stickers. To access the hardware box, pry open short channels along each side, then roll open the channel to uncover the hardware box. Your hardware may come in a long white box as shown or may come in individual boxes. Open your hardware box and refer to the contents diagram of your installation instructions to make sure that you've received all the necessary hardware to install your door. As shown in the instructions, the tools needed for this install are a drill, a 3 8 inch bit, a masonry bit if you're installing the floor guide into concrete, a 1 4 inch drill bit, a 3 16 inch drill bit, 3 inch screws if installing a header board, a pencil, tape measure, 5 8 inch wrench or socket, 1 half inch wrench or socket, hammer, level, stud finder, and an impact drill is recommended. Begin installation by determining the correct placement of the track. In most cases, it will be necessary to install a header board, as shown in this installation video. Start by drawing center marks on each side of where your track will go. Make the marks at 1 and 5 8 inches, plus the height of your door. For example, if your door measures 84 inches tall, make your marks at 85 and 5 8 inches above the floor. It is also good to check for squareness between your floor and ceiling by measuring between your marks and the ceiling. Next, you will need to locate the studs inside the wall that the header board will be anchored into. Use a stud finder to locate and mark the center of each stud in the wall. Next, hold your header board next to your markings for each stud and make marks on the header board at the center of each stud. Then place the header board on the floor and mark the center where each hole for studs will be drilled. It's recommended to use a few layers of cardboard or wood on the floor to protect from drilling into the floor. Then, using your 3 16 inch drill, pre-drill holes for each of the three inch screws that will mount the header board to the studs. Next, place the track on the header board and mark where each lag screw will go. Then, again using your 3 16 inch drill, pre-drill the five holes for each lag screw. Be sure to take note which holes are going to be used for the three inch screws that will mount the header board to the studs versus which holes are going to be used for the lag screws that will mount the track to the header board. The best way to do this is to pre-start the three inch screws into their holes while the header board is still on the floor as shown in this video. The next part is best done with a helper 
holding the header board in place. Using a level and your pre-marked center stud marks, drive the three inch screws into each stud. With your header board securely installed into the studs, you can then install the track. Using your one half inch socket, drive each of the five lag screws into the pre-drilled holes in the header board. Now it's time to install the rollers on your door. Place your door flat on the floor. It is recommended to use a few layers of cardboard or wood on the floor to protect your door from scratches and to prevent drilling into the floor. Using the measurements shown in the installation guide sheet, measure and mark where the holes for each roller will need to be drilled. Then, using your 3 8 inch bit, drill the holes for each of the two bolts of the roller. Using the provided roller bolts, washers, and cap nuts, attach the roller to the door. Be sure you start and tighten the cap nuts finger tight before using the wrench or socket to prevent cross threading. Repeat on the other side for the second roller. Next, you'll want to install the anti-jump discs on the door. Positioning of the anti-jump discs should be near each of the rollers about three inches from each roller. Note, the hole of each anti-jump disc is off center. Install the discs such that the screw is closest to the face of the door, as shown in this video. Be sure to leave the disc snug, but loose enough to still turn the discs as shown. Repeat on both sides. The next step is to install the optional door handle. If you choose to install the door handle, begin by choosing an installation height for the handle. Typically, door handles are installed between 36 and 42 inches from the bottom of the door. Center and mark the holes for each of the door handle screws. Then pre-drill holes using your 1 16th inch drill bit. Finish this step by driving in the provided door handle screws. With the installation of the rollers, anti-jump discs, and optional handle, you're now ready to hang your door on the track. The next step is to install the floor guide. There may be two types of floor guides included with your door. One is a T floor guide and one is a U channel floor guide. It's recommended to use the U channel floor guide. In this video, we use and install the U-channel floor guide, not the T-floor guide. The door is installed over a concrete floor in this video, so we will use the provided concrete anchors. With the door in the open and vertical position, begin this step by placing the floor guide at the base of the door and mark the location of the first two holes. Then swing the door away from the wall and drill the first hole with a masonry bit if drilling into concrete. 
With the first hole drilled, position the remaining floor guides into place, aligning them with the first hole, and mark the remaining holes by swinging the door away from the wall and marking the location of the four holes as shown. Then drill the remaining three holes. When drilling into concrete, if you encounter difficulty drilling through tough spots in the concrete, it is useful to have a cup of water nearby to cool down your masonry bit. With your four holes drilled, use a hammer to tap in the concrete anchors. Then finish by screwing down the first floor guides into place. Then repeat with the second floor guide. Next, you will need to slide the door off the track to slide the door into the floor guide. Start by rolling the door to the right and allow the roller to roll off the track. This will allow you to align the bottom of the door with the floor guide. Slide the roller back onto the track as shown. The next step is to install the optional soft close mechanism. If you choose to not install the soft close feature, skip to the last step of installing the door stop on the track. To install the soft close mechanism, start by inserting the set screws into the soft close mechanism using the included hex wrench. Repeat for both mechanisms. Then install the first soft close by sliding it onto the track and tightening the set screws to secure it to the track. Install it near the track lag bolt as shown. Repeat with the other soft close mechanism on the other side. Next, slide the door to the closed position and mark where the soft close bracket will need to be installed. Follow up by sliding the door to the open position and mark where the other soft close bracket will need to be installed. Next, remove the door from the track to install the soft close brackets. Using the marks you made in the previous steps, install the soft close brackets using the provided screws. Be sure that the knobs of the brackets are mounted toward the side of the door that will face the wall, as shown. Next, hang the door back on the rail to test the soft close mechanism. Before testing the soft close, slide it to the upwards position to allow it to catch the soft close bracket as shown. Doing so will allow the soft close mechanism to catch the soft close bracket. Repeat on both sides, then test the operation of your soft close mechanisms. Occasionally, depending on the tolerances of your barn door installation, it is possible that the soft close bracket is not high enough inside the soft close mechanism to fully function, as shown here. If this is the case, then it's necessary to install a 1 8 inch spacer between the soft close bracket and the door. In this video, the installer uses a 1 8 inch shim of wood. The last step is to install the door stops on each side of the track as shown. Use the included hex wrench to tighten the set screws to secure the door stop to the track. Your door is now fully installed and ready to use.